darkroom and I'm going to make some carbon transfer tissue. This is part two of my five part video. The reason why I'm making a new series of videos is a lot has changed from oh, 10, 11 years ago um, as far as my working procedure. So I thought I'd make a new video just to show that. So I'm Video number one, or part one, I made the glob. And now I'm going to pour the tissue using this glob. So, the first thing I need to do is make sure my pouring station is level. Otherwise my tissue, the glob when I pour it on, will not be even. Right? You really want to avoid having thicker thick edge or thick one side is thicker than the other side because you're just going to get really crappy transfers. So this is my pouring station. It's just galvanized sheet metal I got from uh, almost like heating duct metal I got from a local hardware store. And it's glued down onto some thick vertical board. I'm able to do two 8x10 tissues on here but I, I, I'm in no hurry so I'll just do I just do one tissue at a time. Okay, so I need to check to make sure that this is level. Let's have a look at my pouring station here. I have two sponges. One's for cleaning the surface with warm water. The other one is for cleaning the tissue after I've secured it. I have a spritz bottle with warm water in it and I use this to secure the tissue substrate down. Squeegee. This bottle is not for breeze. If you saw my first video, you'll know that this is isopropyl alcohol, 70%. And if there's any bubbles um, in the glob before I pour it, I give it a quick spritz. And that'll get rid of the bubbles. What can you use for a tissue substrate? Well, there's a few things that you can use. I've always used Eupo. Um, these two sheets, believe it or not, I've had for about 10 years. I use them over and over again. Um, this is a really thin grade. I'm sorry, I don't remember the weights. This is a heavier weight, either will do. And before you, um, when you go to this art store to buy some Yupo, always wash it with some soapy water and rinse it really well before you use it. Because sometimes there's a bit of grease on it from the manufacturer. Now my glob has been sitting in some warm water just to get it nice and liquidy again. Looks good. Remember when I filtered this the other day and spritzed it? There were some really light coating of bubbles. Well, they're all gone. This is, has gassed out. Before I pour the tissue, I need to adhere the tissue substrate onto the surface here. I have magnetic strips that I put on the tissue and they help keep the glop from pouring outside of the tissue. So I got them at a, a uh, sign making shop. I'm just going to check the temperature. I like uh, pouring temperature around between 30 35 Celsius. For the this t uh, 8 by 10 tissue that I'm making, I need about 100 mils. Mm -hmm. 34. Yeah, that's good. Now I'm going to adhere the tissue to here, so just to keep it nice and flat. And there's no air pockets underneath. So I'll spritz this. I use warm water. And, and I'll spray it again. So it's nice and secure. And uh, now I'll clean the surface and I use isopropyl alcohol. It's really not necessary to do this. It's just a habit that I got into. And you know what they say, old habits are hard to break. You never know, there might be some grease on there from my greasy fingers. Okay, and then I'll put my little and 
just give it a wipe here. Sometimes there's a bit of water there. There are, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a few bubbles in there and I'll just spritz those out. Boom, they're gone just like that. Now I used to use a, a comb to spread the glob around, but I don't bother. I use my fingers now. Just push it into the corners. Then just have a really quick look at it, just to make sure there's no little bubbles. If you notice uh, in, there's a bubble or two, don't be afraid to pop it. Okay, so you can just touch it. Do you see any? To check to see if the gelatin, the glop, has set, what I do is I just sort of breathe on it. And it's moving quite a bit, so it hasn't set yet. A few moments later. I'll use my little skewer and I'll skewer the edges all the way around. This way I won't rip the uh, gelatin. It's, you know, it's just, it's only set. It's very fragile. And I'll use my little sponge here just to clean up where Glop seep it out. Mm -hmm. That wasn't me that that was this that made that noise. And to get these magnetic strips ready for the next pouring, I just stick them in here in warm water just to let the spilled gelatin to wash off. Okay, when uh, I finished all my tissues, I just hang them up here with thumbtacks and I have a fan going. It's on its lowest setting. It's a little over a meter away from the tissue. And I expect uh, these tissue to be dry by about noon tomorrow. And that will lead into part three of this series that, um, that I'm working on. In part three, I'll show you how to sensitize the tissues and also how I prepare the paper for the transfer. See you later.